Our first guest has a lot going on. He stars in the award-winning hit TV show, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He just wrote his first book. It's called Manhood. And he recently was named the new host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Please clap it up for the always entertaining Terry Crews. Snappy dresser. <laughs> Every time I see you, you always have on something really fly and funky. Oh, and we talked you. last time you were here, you, you said, you know, if you ever were homeless, you'd be the flyest dressing homeless man exactly. out there. I'd be like, mm, you need some drink, please. I, I mean, this is, this is you, you were a fashion risk taker. It looks good on you, Terry. That's it, it's fine. It's and fine. Congratulations on um, the two Golden Globes that your show Brooklyn Nine-Nine got. I am the happiest man in Hollywood right now. I'm telling I you. I mean, you know, remember we were talking about just, you know, taking risks and people always believing you have one dream yes. and the whole deal. Well, I, you know, one thing I know, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. But that's my advantage. Yeah. That's my advantage. There's nobody to tell me, you can't do that. I'm like, I didn't know that. I couldn't do that. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You're a very likable guy, though. You, you know, you don't seem to take yourself too seriously. Well, and you... I'm an old football player. I should be in jail. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna be real. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, Terry played for the Green Bay Packers, right? I, I played for every, every... Rams, Packers, Chargers, Redskins, Eagles. Six teams in seven years. Yeah. A little bit of everywhere. And you got out of it, though, just in time, it seems, because now you have this whole flourishing outside career. Well, I, you know what's funny? Because I always thought I was going to be behind the scenes. And the first thing I ever auditioned for... What do you mean, for, behind the scenes? Well, I was... Listen, I'm an artist. I'm a, I am a painting, drawing guy. I have a, I'm left-handed, right brain. I always thought I was going to be in special effects or creating movies behind the scenes... Yes. And ...writing movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned for a, uh, for a TV show... And I got it. It was a show called Battle Dome. And you're talking about game shows. Oh, that was a game show. It was a game show. The first thing I ever did. It was like American Gladiators on steroids. We were sending people to the hospital. Did they throw you in a cage and laid it on fire? They lit it on fire <laughs> and threw me in a cage. Yeah. And I had to battle contestants lit and throw them out of the cage, the whole thing. I, yeah, look at that. My yeah. character was T-Money. Yeah, T-Money. Yeah, you see the little money symbol, yeah, you know? <laughs> so, um, and now you're the, the new host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. We'll see. They gave me a dream job. I get to hand out money to people. I, 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 listen, I would have called it Who Wants to Be a Zillionaire, but right. the producer's like, we'll kill you. Yeah. We'll kill you. Now you stop have to it. use your They're own like, money Don't for play it. With that. <laughs> so Cedric is currently hosting it, and when do you start? Well, uh, literally in the new season. So we literally start in a, in a few weeks. I get right there, and then I'm going to do it in between Brooklyn Nine-Nine and come back. I love being busy. Yeah, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is shot in, 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 LA. In, in L.A. on a soundstage. So and you don't have to move your family. No, but, but Millionaire is shot on the East Coast. So is it? I'm going to be going back and forth. You know, it's, it's all good. I, no. I, I belong to the world. Yes, baby. yes. It's I'm, also... I'm, <laughs> I can't stop. I gotta straighten my tie. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's all messed up. Um, <laughs> and so, so now, I mean, you're get, you've always had a degree of fame, even when you played football. But this degree of fame that you're experiencing, I mean, being your your show was one of the only sitcoms that was picked up by Fox. The rest yes. of them were canceled. Yes. It's so terrible. Isn't the TV business ruthless? It's you know what it is. It's it's very very hard. That means you have to be very very good. And I and I am blessed to be with the best cast on TV. It Let really me tell is you a good cast. Andre Brower, Andy Samberg, Melissa Fumero, Joe it's a good show. The cast is amazing. It's a great show. I like and to. Call it a 22 episode movie. Yes, and so now you got you won two Golden Globes. Was yes. that your first time ever being at a grand award show? First time. No, I never thought. Wendy, come on. You beat I'm the guy from family. White Chicks. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 White Chicks. I, you know what I mean? I, I was like, I would. I never thought I would get an award. Yes. For anything. Yeah. I mean, if people were like, you know, I'm, I'm the Damon in Friday. You know yeah, what I mean? Yes. You don't get Oscars for that. You know what I mean? So I, to be on that stage and I'm looking down at Leonardo DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, Michael Douglas, I'm like, this is crazy. Yes. 
Now, when, when the whole cast wins an award, do each one of you get one to take no, home? No, no, you don't get anything. They gave me a picture of me next to the award. <laughs> Even, they, you know, Uma Thurman gave us the card, and I took the card that said our announcement, and then somebody just came over like, we'll take that, thank you. <laughs> God, you know what I mean? I, I, you know, but I have the memory. Yes. I, I got it on TiVo. Yes. I got it on TiVo, and I said, don't touch the TiVo. Cause see, you can't now. We used to have video cassettes. I'm uh -huh, from that uh -huh. day, okay. Now you can't touch the TiVo. Right. I got if somebody, my kids go in there and they start recording like Phineas and Ferb or something. Yeah. They all they end up erasing recording my over life. Your stuff. My yeah. whole life is on one TiVo. So Terry's got a new movie coming out. We're gonna talk to him about that. But I want to talk more about the book as well. So. Keep it here. Terry Crews is still here. So he's got this new book. It's called Manhood. And in the book, he writes about sex addiction. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Well, I was addicted to pornography since I was 12 years old. I don't know that I believe in sex addiction. So t tell me about it. Well, let me, let me tell you. It's funny because I had my father was addicted to alcohol uh -huh. and my mother was addicted to religion. So what happens is you had an addictive household, okay? Yes. I was not allowed to, we weren't allowed to play sports. We weren't allowed to watch movies. We weren't allowed to, uh, my mother had, you know, no makeup, the whole thing. And it was wild because Where'd I Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Flint, Michigan. Okay, go but ahead. It, my, my mom was Kojic, which is uh, Church of God in Christ, which oh. back in the day, oh. you just didn't do nothing, okay? okay. Nothing was legal. Okay. Yeah. All right, except you, know, you, can watch, you can't watch Jaws in the theater, but you can watch it when it come on TV. Yes. So, uh, it was a lot of mixed messages, in my, and, and there was a lot of violence, a lot of abuse. What I did... How is, many siblings? Is, I have an older brother and a younger sister. So you would go in your room at 12 years old and you'd watch porn? Well, no, but well, you go to the uncle's house. Okay. It was always the uncle's basement. Everybody got an uncle's basement. Yes. Okay, the first time, let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you how powerful women are. You don't know how powerful you are. Men get addicted to looking at pictures of you. That's how powerful so, a woman is, so, okay? But, well, I gotta say this, because this is the thing. I would, met, it's one of those things that took me away. And it medicated me. And, and, mm -hmm. and, but, but this is the problem. This is the problem. I never told anyone. Never told. I didn't tell my wife. Now, you've been years. married to Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. For 25, 25 years. 25 years. Now, and, and um, you write about infidelity um, in the book. Yes. And, um, and, but we were talking through the commercial break, and you were saying that you, you as a family had been dealing with this, and now it's been about five years. Yep. So you're healed, and it feels very cathartic to write well, about it's, it. It's one of those things where the, the pornography addiction turns into something else. You can't have something like that in your life without it growing into something else. Everything grows, whatever you keep in your life. Uh, and See, every man at one time in his life is a fool, a victim, or a king. Yes. A fool is, is gets mad when people try to help you. You know what I mean? Okay. You're like, hey, hey what, leave me alone. I'm in the street. I'm going to stay in the street. Leave me alone. And a car hits you, and it's like, bam. Right. Then you're a victim. And, and what happens is you mess your whole life up, and then you're, 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 you're like, blaming everybody. You're like, it's my wife. It's my kids. And let Got me tell you. you. A, a victim is where the addiction stage lives. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. you get mad at your wife, you're like, well, I need this because I need to watch pornography because, you know, these people tripping and, you know, then and then she ain't doing it and, and you start blaming her. How did you, how were you able to hide that from Rebecca for so long? Would you go down to the, your uncle's basement? No, no, no. <laughs> well, you, you're talking about, see, but you're talking about over the course of uh, a lot what? of years. I had this a long time before I even met her. Uh -huh. But then what was happening is, you know, you're talking about the internet. Yeah. And the inter this is the thing. Uh, the internet is a powerful, powerful thing. But you have to, you know, you have to gauge yourself. You have to watch. And, uh, that's the way I would do it was internet, internet pornography. Gotcha. So it would grow into something else. Let me switch gears. Um, sure. I had no idea that you were partially deaf in one ear. Yeah. What, what, and you read lips. That, yes. You've been doing that for years. Yeah. Um, I had no idea, Terry Crews. So how'd that happen? I know. I'm weird. I don't, I don't know what else to say. No, you know? but you said there was abuse in the house. Like, did, did you, one of your parents hit you? No, or? no. It, it was something where I, I could not hear certain decibels. Things that go really high, yes. I just couldn't hear. It was something I grew up with. Yeah. Yes. And what was wild is that I went to see a doctor and she covered her mouth and started talking and, I, and she asked me to repeat what she said and I couldn't. You couldn't. And I didn't even know it. So now do you have something in your ear to help you hear? I don't I, see anything. I, no, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Uh -huh. It's a matter of, you know, this is one reason why I'm so loud and this Old Spice helps with that, you know. Terry, <laughs> it's magnificent um, to be you these days. Tell us about this movie, Blended, with Drew Barrymore. And, yeah. And who else? And, um, and Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. That's it. Um, well, Blended, it will be out this Friday. Uh -huh. It's basically I play the South African Tom Jones. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and Adam 
and I have, have this relationship where he calls me and he's like, man, let's make a character. Let's make something up. And uh, I went and got the wig made, got the suits made, yes. got everything. And they were like, wait a minute, wait, you, you know, we don't like this. You gonna, you gonna, we, we can't, we're not going to give you your money back. Yes. So yeah. I said, dude, you're going to love it. And his name is Nickens, and he is the biggest entertainer in the world. And the premise of the movie? <laughs> um, well, actually, we have a clip. So let's take a look at the clip. Roll it. They are bending. They are bonding. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Didn't know you guys worked out together, but it makes sense. When one person meets another, come together. The boob trick never gets tiring. Yeah, no, I mean, first of all, wait. People may be like, man, I'm getting tired of this boob thing, moving them things. But you know what? I, I do it. it, and they never edit it out. <laughs> Why don't they edit it out? Congratulations on everything. Thank Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Millionaire, Blended. I tell Dave, the truth, y'all. I tell the truth. Yes, Rebecca. And your new book, it's now in stores, everybody. It's called Manhood and Blended. It hits uh, theaters on Friday.